Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for April 27th. Uh, item number one, we have a vote to approve the issuance of a sewer bond. Are we listening to Mr. Gilligan, I believe? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, members of the board. I appreciate your time this evening. I'm here to request that the board vote to authorize the issuance of $200,000 in a sewer bond as funded by the Massachusetts Water Resource Authority. It is a no interest loan to be paid back over time. Uh, this is in keeping with Article 33 of the annual town meeting of 2014. Uh, as I told you when, we, when I was here before you relative to a water bond, we had anticipated that there would be no funding from the MWRA and uh, the Director of Public Works, Michael Rademacher, and I decided to do a little foraging, made a few phone calls, and lo and behold, funding is available. So I ask for the vote. I will also tell you that there is additional good news, that in addition to the $200,000 sewer bond, the town uh, will be receiving an $800,000 grant, also authorized under the same Warren article. I expect those contracts and agreements uh, to be in our hands by the end of the week, and we'll deliver those to the town manager for execution. So if we give you two more weeks and you do some more foraging, can you find another million for I'll, us? I'll try, Mr. Chairman. We'll see what we can do. Thank you, Mr. Gilligan. And excuse me, I meant to start by, for the millions watching at home, uh, we're starting at 6.30 because town meeting starts tonight. And also, Mr. Dunn will be arriving. Uh, he's just going to be a few minutes late. So how say the board on the uh, request by Mr. Gilligan? Um, yeah, Ms. Mahan. Do I need to state the vote that has been cited to us? Or can no, I all you have to do is say the vote as recommended uh, in writing. Move approval of the vote as recommended in writing. Second. Second. Discussion? No. <clears throat> all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those aye. opposed? Thank you, Mr. Gilligan. I thank you for your time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Thank, thank you. you. Item number two, it's a request for a public entertainment license. Yes, Mr. Leone, how are you doing? Good, good evening, Mr. Greeley, members of the board. I'm here with Bob O'Gwin, the owner of Common Ground Restaurant in the center, 319 Broadway. Um, Bob is seeking an entertainment license in conformance with the dictates of the special permit he was granted by the um, ARB for the spot. As you can see in the material provided, you can see where he's going to put it in, and it won't be amplified. It'll just be a, a nice pe two or three piece band. Yeah, correct. Acoustic. Yep. Acoustic. And Bob, will you be singing yourself? Or? I will not torture okay. you, no. <laughs> okay, how say the board? I move approval. Move approval. Subject to all conditions as set forth. Subject to all conditions as set forth. Is there a second? Second. Second discussion. Mrs. Mahan. Um, where are we with the um, ongoing issue of outdoor seating? I know it was included in here. Does that, that was, mean you're asking for it, or is that still on hold? Uh, no, that was put before the board, and I think Mr. Greeley wants to um, state that it's before your agenda on May 11th, Mr. Okay. Greeley. All right, just because it's contained in here. Yes, we've know. asked to put it off, and the reason is we want to hear from our uh, director of planning uh, as to what are the plans for that Broadway Plaza. Mm -hmm. And so we want to understand what's going to happen there before, but it looks like a very good plan. Uh, we just want to know Appreciate what it. the... Uh, uh, are they going to take out that big flower pot or whatever that we call that thing? So that's why we got to put it off, but we'll deal with it at the next meeting. Which and I'm glad that's, that's the, the Which course one? we're the taking. The one you wanted the to decorate. Huh? Uh, I'm glad uh, that's the course we're taking on that issue. It's just that <laughs> right. it was contained in the packet. And I'm <laughs> sorry I didn't tell you that beforehand. Okay. But. So you. we are just at this point voting on the public entertainment license. Um, as moved by Mr. Curo and subject to all conditions as set forth, which uh, with an excellent look attorney like Mr. Leone, we know that uh, Bob will certainly meet all those conditions. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Thank you for having us early. Thank you. We'll see you soon, John. That's a couple hours. Okay, for approval. Uh, on the Mass Housing Partnership, I believe I turn to Mr. Chapdelaine on this first. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'm actually going to ask Laura Wiener of the Planning Department to address the board. Sure, certainly. Good evening. Uh, Laura Wiener, Director of Housing and Assistant Director of Planning. Um, you have before you a draft comment letter to the Massachusetts Housing Partnership regarding a comprehensive permit for 20 Westminster Street. 
It's a triangular lot at the intersection of Lowell and Westminster Avenue, rather, not Street, that um, at, right at Downing Square. The lot is a brick building, formerly a church, mostly vacant right now with a large front yard that extends into the square. Uh, the property is partially in use as a daycare center. The Housing Corporation of Arlington recently purchased the property and plans to convert the existing building into nine affordable rental units. Because it's a single family zone, they need a comprehensive permit to build multifamily housing at this location. This is the first step in the comprehensive permit process. The state is asking the town for its comments prior to their ruling on the project's eligibility for a comprehensive permit. Um, the Housing Corporation held a neighborhood meeting in the fall. About 20, 20 to 25 residents attended, and it was, it was mostly favorable. There were some concerns expressed about um, parking and um, mostly parking, perhaps noise a little bit. Um, and I think that they have taken them into consideration in, in their planning. Um, the planning department held a meeting in late March with the developer and town departments to get town comments to help you with your letter. And the comments that were made at that meeting are reflected in the comment letter before you. Most of, I, I think everything in that letter is, is a resolvable issue. Um, they had to do with parking, trash and dumpster, stormwater, and um, we are also asking that the project be affordable in perpetuity. Um, Pam Hallett was supposed to be here. <laughs> I'm sure she's on her way to answer any other questions you might have. I mean, one of the reasons that I think we feel generally favorable towards this project is that it, it is a, it's within an already built site. Um, there will be no additional construction except for um, parking, adding some parking on the lot. So um, it, it sort of it will take a, take um, advantage of existing infrastructure and roads and stuff, and, and doesn't involve any new construction. Okay, thank you. So first of all, can I have a motion for the chair to sign the letter? Mr. Mr. Chair, I, I move to authorize and instruct the chair to sign the letter as presented to us on on behalf of the board. Is there a second? Second. Questions? Okay, Ms. Mahan, then I say Mr. Burns. <coughs> um, I just want to reemphasize, and I, I heard heard you say it in the latter part of your presentation, but I just kind of want to make sure it's definitely amplified on the record. When over the w past weekend we had the different precinct meetings, um, of course, uh, the Mugar property came up and the affordable housing units um, that it's proposed to contain that will be for 20 years. If you could just restate for these nine units, will it just be the 20 year? Um, no, I, I think we can have, um, a the next step after the project eligibility letter is issued is it goes to the ZBA, and the ZBA will issue the, well, we assume will issue the permit with conditions, and one of the conditions will be that it would remain affordable in perpetuity. Okay. But to be clear, the, the pro uh, current proposal <coughs> from HCA proposes a 30-year affordability restriction, but we're asking for perpetuity. The, the, how, the, the financing is for 30 years, and that's where that number came from. I'm, I don't think that um, HCA specifically asked for any particular term. Okay. Thank you. Here's Pam. Here's Pam, who I called Pat and Patricia Great. all day Sorry. yesterday. I apologize, it's Pam. I was just asking about um, these units we were discussing yesterday at one of the precinct meetings that a, a current proposal has um, affordable housing for 20 years, and what would the um, length of affordable housing on these units be? We could do, um, you asked for forever. We could do that, yes, perpetuity. We could, we've done that on Capitol Square, we've done it on other ones, so that would be something we can agree to. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Mr. Byrne. Well, first, Mr. Greer, I'd like to commend you on an extremely well-written letter. <laughs> um, all right, you need to say no more. Anybody else? <laughs> Um, no, I, I just want to say that I think um, the Housing Corps has been a great partner um, for you. the town, and I'm uh, really excited to support this development. And I'm also uh, excited to see that it's aligned with the master plan, and I really look forward to approving more projects as they come before us that are also aligned with the master plan. Um, so that being said, I am happy to support it. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Dunn. Mr. Greeley, I apologize for being late to you and to everyone who's here. It was moments only, so no problem. 
Any thoughts? Uh, I, I would look forward to supporting it. Okay, Mr. Perry. I look forward. I was at the uh, info session that, that was referenced, and uh, I, I do applaud the Housing Corporation for, for reaching out to the neighbors in that area before there was even a formal proposal on the table. I think you're know, working with a great architect who's actually worked with the town on, on the master plan is, and is uh, familiar with uh, some of the goals of the, of the town um, as well. So uh, I, I look forward to it. I think it's a great reuse of the property. Great. Further comments? All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Kiro uh, that you authorize me to sign an extremely well-written letter. All those in favor, <laughs> please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Um, I did not write this letter, but thank you for helping <laughs> Laura to do so. Uh, thank you very much. Good thank you very time. much. Thank you. Thank you. So consent agenda, we have two items. First of all, uh, minutes of the meeting of March 30th, 2015, and then a unified relay across America. Um, <clears throat> any comments on either one of those? Move approval on the minutes. Move approval on the minutes. Mr. Carroll? I'll second, but I have second. a comment. Yep. But a comment, go. Yeah, I, I raised this with, with staff, and I think that they've researched that um, there is a slight uh, error in the, um, the vote on Article 15. Um, it reflects that, that we took the portion of the vote on which you recused yourself on the evening um, of, of these minutes, but actually had, had occurred at the previous meeting, okay, and there's, there's an issue. So I, I understand that uh, that's in process of being corrected. All right, Marie, all set on that. Uh, is there anybody, is there anybody, is uh, Joshua Lee here or anybody here wishing to speak on the, uh, the uh, relay on behalf of the Special Olympics? That might no. maybe be a separate motion on that? Okay, well. Uh, that, do you want to incorporate that? We I just wanted to give him a chance to speak on it. It's a, it's a consent agenda item for us, which means everything is in order on it. So. Uh, anybody want to make a motion to include both, or you want a separate motion? Well, I, I would have a separate motion. All right, on okay. Minutes. So on the minutes, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. And then on the, um, on the Special Olympics Unified Relay Across America to happen on May 28th, and it's to support and raise awareness of the Special Olympics World Summer Games that are being held in L.A. in July of this year. Ms. Mahan. I would make a motion that um, we move receipt of Joshua Lee's request, but that we, um, in our motion, um, authorize that Joshua Lee meet with the appropriate officials from the Arlington Police Department to discuss an alternate route from what they've suggested, based on the correspondence that we received from the Arlington Police Department on the day and route that they would like to, that they're, they're anticipating, um, that we approve this subject to them meeting with um, members of the Arlington Police Department to come up with an alternate route that works. Okay. So uh, the motion <coughs> is to approve subject to Mr. Lee or representatives to meet with the police department about route and other issues, all issues related to the relay. Sure. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Discussion. Again, no one's here to speak on that. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. All right, so now we have public hearings. First of all, for National Grid from Fox Meadow Lane. Yes, hi. Start now? Yeah, please, uh, hi. The National Grid hereby respectfully requests your consent to install and maintain approximately 44 feet, more or less, of six inch gas main in Fox Meadow Lane in Arlington from the existing six inch main near house number five, westerly to house number nine for a new gas service. Move okay. approval. Move approval, subject, to, subject conditions. to conditions. Second. Second. Questions by the board? <coughs> Excuse me. Are there any residents here wishing to speak on this matter from Fox, Fox Meadow Lane? All right, um, so move approval, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, approved. And next, a National Grid petition for Prescott Street. Uh, National Grid hereby respectfully requests your consent to install and maintain approximately 110 feet, more or less, of four-inch gas main in Prescott Street, Arlington, 
from the existing four inch main near five Winslow Street, southerly to building number four for a new gas service. Okay. Move approval uh, subject to all conditions. Move so approval so subject to all conditions. Is there a second? Uh, second. Okay. Just Yep, just, just one ahead. comment, um, and I think I pretty much gleaned this from the materials that uh, have been submitted, that we already have a lot of ongoing work down there um, in terms of all the other utilities, and I know that there will be a need for some storage of materials. And I think I'm reading inherent in what's been submitted to us that um, the utility is working with the town in terms of where that storage goes as well as um, the appropriate police details, which I think probably overlap with one another. Yeah, there would certainly always be a job meeting between engineering and police to make sure that all that was addressed prior to construction going forward. Okay, Absolutely. and I only raise that because that's like a really busy nexus. It's I Thousand am. Islands, it's yep. a community safety. But okay, and, and it seems yep. like it's already in here. I just want to, in case anybody asked about it, I can say, listen to the meeting, we discussed it. Thank you. Okay, other comments, Tim? Are there any residents here wishing to speak on this petition? Okay, and, and as always on any of these petitions, um, they have already or will meet with our uh, Director of Public Works and also Correct. with Adam and police and fire and anybody else involved with that. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Nice seeing you again. Oh, wait, we have one more, right? Oh, sorry. It was oh, Comcast. Comcast. Yeah, but I don't oh. think she's doing it. Sorry. <clears throat> My fault, Mr. This Chairman. is a Comcast petition. This is the one I was all excited about, Mr. Chairman. All righty. <laughs> Mr. Lahorn, is it? Thanks, Austin. Good evening. My, my name is Earl Austin. I'm the project coordinator for Comcast. Yes, sir. Uh, this is to install approximately 60 feet of conduit from pole 881 over to Water Street to Mass Ave, and then from that intersection down to in front of 635 and 637 Mass Ave. So, uh, Mr. Dunn. I'm happy to move approval subject conditions, but I did have one particular comment that I wanted to make. And so uh, that's the engineering department in this recommendation talked about the clamp project mm -hmm. and how it was important it was to get this done essentially before the clamp project. So that uh, I just wanted to impress upon you how important the clamp project is and how big it's going to be and how much money we're spending on it and how upset we'd be if someone were to go in and you know, dig it after we did it. No, we'd probably be looking to start within two weeks. Okay. All right. Uh, if so, for some reason it becomes delayed, we'll be, we should, it's very important that we figure out. Then we can out. always hold off. Yep. Well, or if we have to figure out how to get it in before this project okay, happens. That's fine. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, so that was uh, moved by Mr. Dunn and seconded. Someone second? Second. Seconded. And Ms. Mahan? Um, just um, either to the proponent or the town manager. Um, sort of piggybacking on Mr. Dunn's um, questions around the clamp project. Uh, in the uh, correspondence that we received from the grant of location from Public Works, it did cite under number one about if proposed work is not finished on time, if proposed work isn't um, in, in confluence with um, what would be considered, um, that certain notifications would go out. I'm just wondering, I don't see any times time allocations assigned to that um, in terms of uh, in keeping in concert with the clamp project and in, in its completion as well as the, it's saying the notifications are there but when do they kick in when do they happen or when is that anticipated so as I read it I think it's tied in with having it done either before the project's done or if it's not done before the project is implemented then having the board consider requiring a higher level of pavement restoration so I, I it's not necessarily a definitive timeline base, but rather project implementation. But obviously, the goal is going to be get it in the ground and get it ready for us to do the clamp project before it starts. So the proponent anticipates that if for some reason that did not happen, there would be notification and appearance before the Board of Selectmen in the future to outline sort yes. of a yes. yeah. wrap up plan to that. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. And, and that's in concert with? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Other comments or questions from the Board? Are there any residents here wishing to speak on this issue? All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Dunn, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. <coughs> so thank you very much. Uh, you. Approved. Uh, so this is this was your first time here? Yes. But you've been in front of other boards of selectmen? Yeah, I do Malden, Medford, yeah. Everett. So the first are one. you noticing how well run this is compared to others? 
This I am, but favorite. I noticed one thing. You didn't do the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone else does that for us. Oh, well, oh, wait, wait for the opening of town meeting where we do the Star Spangled Banner. Thank okay, you very and much. And I don't sing. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Yeah. Motion for reconsideration. Uh, okay, so uh, item uh, number nine. This is a request for a food vendor license. Um, we, we, we need to table this issue, but is, is uh, Samir here? Oh, about the food for Fenway Market? No. Oh. Move to table. Okay. Second. So move to table and second it. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, there needs to be some more research done on this. We just weren't able to get it done by tonight's meeting. Sorry. Okay. So uh, now uh, we have, this is a, a underage alcohol sales uh, violations. I'll start with um, uh, Mr. Heim, our town council. Doug? Good evening, uh, Mr. Greeley. Good evening, uh, members of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, so on March 12, 2015, the Arlington Police Department did a second round of alcohol compliance checks. As this board will recall from its previous hearing, um, these uh, checks basically involve uh, an operation which Officer uh, Stephen Porcello would describe at greater length, but identified uh, two Arlington establishments, one package store and one restaurant that uh, upon information and belief served to underage persons. Uh, a copy of the operations incident report was provided to the Board of Selectmen. And um, Mr. Uh, uh, Officer Porcello, I'm sorry, Inspector Porcello, will uh, speak to you and provide you with the basic rundown of, of um, the details of the operations <coughs> and findings. Excuse me. Uh, I encourage you to ask any questions that you have. And after uh, he's concluded his remarks, we'll invite um, each one of the uh, establishments if they're here to speak on on their behalf thank you good evening uh, so like mr. Heim said on the 12th of March we conducted a second round of stings um, we had two volunteer undercover operatives come in and assist us with this right after going out we took their pictures took their different forms of identification took their money locked that up they signed consent forms they signed um, guideline forms and they also took the breathalyzer, both blue zero. Then we checked on 16 different establishments in town. Um, we had two failures at Punjab Tadka on Mass Ave. Our operatives were served two uh, Coors Lights. And at Monotomy Wine and Spirits on Broadway, our operatives were served uh, one six pack of Sam Adams. At the conclusion, we went back to the station. They again took the breathalyzer, passed. They were given back their property. Um, the, receipt that re the receipt that we received from Punjab and the six pack were placed into evidence. Any questions um, from the board? Yes, Ms. Mahan. Just sort of a procedural housekeeping question. Um, I noticed that at least one of the establishments, that, which may, not, may no longer be in business, um, Zocala was closed the night that you went um, and there may be one or two others but that's the only one I noticed I'm just wondering sort of as a general question um, is there a, another anticipated if, if there was any other business that you went to that was closed that is still um, operational is that still on your screen for this year I'm not sure I don't know if there's any more things planned um, we, I think we got to just about all of them but okay. if not all of them other questions? Yes, Mr. Curro. And uh, ju just to be clear, in addition to the certified mail notifications, uh, I understand from the report that immediately uh, upon the, uh, after the alleged violations, an officer <coughs> did go in and, and inform the establishments that, that uh, an alleged violation had taken place. Yeah, so our ultimate goal in this whole thing is, is, is to get zero violations, right? We don't want yeah. any violations. So we decided that if we go right in, right after the sale is made, we can allow that business owner to make whatever corrections has to be made right then going forward as opposed to finding out later down the road when maybe more violations would occur mm -hmm. when we're not there. Okay. Right. Thank you. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Thank you. So uh, now what we're going to do is ask um, managers or owners of each of these two establishments to come forward and of course the board is interested in an explanation of what happened and why and what changes um, they intend to make to ensure this won't happen again. So the first one we have is uh, Monotomy Beer and Wine. Good 
evening. Mary Parent, I'm the manager and one of the owners. Um, quite honestly, we're embarrassed about this and we sincerely regret it happening. Um, the employee that was on staff that night actually works in the restaurant and food service business. He thought he knew the people and that's why he didn't card them. That's beside the point. Um, we are steadfast in how we ID our, the people that come into our store and again, we're just embarrassed by it. So our plan is to retake the tips program from Massachusetts for the owners, myself, the manager, and our three employees who are all, you know, um, adults, they're not kids, and they aren't just letting people come in and buy beer. In fact, we don't usually have that clientele at our store anyway. We're kind of young professional more than anything else. So again, our employee just thought that he knew them, and that's why he didn't card them. And he felt awful about it. We felt awful about it. We're in and out all night long. He, he can text us at any time. All of our employees can text us. And again, this is not how we run, and we feel really bad about it. Okay. Questions from the board? Okay, Mr. Dunn. Do I remember you used to have a policy that you did, you had some policy about who you would card. It was, was it under 30 or was it everybody or there was a, in the? We did it after one of the last times where we actually passed the sting, which we've passed it every time for the eight years we've been in business. Um, <coughs> we did put it into effect and it actually annoyed some of our older customers to the point where they were yelling at us and saying we refuse to show our IDs anymore. So. We backed off on that, but we, you know, we do tastings every week. We card everyone that looks like they're under 35. There's nothing like making a woman who's 40 happy by asking her to go to her car and get her ID. I mean, that's, you know, I feel that way too. But we are usually very diligent about this, and we would love it if that was kind of a town-wide mm -hmm. thing. Mr. You know? Harrington, Mr. Harrington, Mr. Harrington, Mr. Harrington, please, please move, sir. We saved that seat for the advocate reporter. Thank you. So, yeah. so I do, so he can have the table to write on. Thank you. Mr. Harrington, please. No, absolutely not. I'm sorry? Ms. Harrington, if you don't, I will call a break now and call the police and have you moved. I've asked you as chairman of the board, this is our chamber. We saved that for the advocate reporter. The public's please, sir. Sorry. It's for the advocate reporter. Yeah, that's nice to have he doesn't care. I said please. Why, uh, why are you speaking for him? I'm speaking oh, for this board of select. Mr. Harrington, sir. All right, we're on a break until he moves. Sorry, man. It's our chamber, sir. No, it isn't. This is the public's problem. What is the you think you are? Go on a break. Where we call, call Stephen. Call Stephen. <coughs> I'll be recording this. Oh. Hey, Marie, just call, call someone from the yeah, police department. Don't call, call any individual. All right, let's go. Sorry. 
Can you know, somebody get I'm, someone I'm in the back? Sorry, Mary. All right, let's go. <laughs> You're so popular, Steve. I so worry about your opinions. You're going to accuse me of taking bribes again? Oh, but you did. Yes, you did. Oh, I see. You're not even man enough. Huh? What a guy. Yeah. Please record this. When you, writing as the Arlington Observer, accused me of taking bribes, you never apologized. I guess you're not going to either. All right, let's get back to this. Sorry. All right, so Mary, sorry about that. And as you stated, you and all the rest of the um, owners and those who work there are going to retake the TIPS program. Correct. And you're embarrassed, and we understand. Ms. Mahan. Um, and, and I just wanted to put forth, since Mary is here before us, and we have had the uh, first round of um, people who, unfortunately, um, were found to be in violation of it. Just a suggestion to you, it's not a requirement. Um, the three previous establishments, one of the things that they did was they sat down with their employee and it was just maybe one or two sentences. They wrote out what happened, um, what the correction should be or what should be done so it doesn't happen in the future. And then the employee acknowledged that as well as the owner manager of the establishment so that if for some reason it was needed in the future for the owner or employee. So I just wanted okay. to put that before you. All right, that's a great idea. Um, like I said, this employee felt so horrific that night. He, he called both myself and Neil Duggan and Tracy and apologized profusely. Again, he thought he recognized them. That was the only reason he didn't card. He cards, I've watched him card multiple people. We are, we, are mul we are on top of it now. I mean, it's not, you get lazy every once in a while, you know, but that's not, again, that's not how we run things there. So, so absolutely. And, and I don't think it'll happen again, but I'm just saying as a member and of the I love the idea and, and having yes. a process just for you all in right. terms of going right. forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Sorry. Other members of the board? Yes, Mr. Kiro. Yeah, I just want to say I, I, I appreciate the steps that you're, you're taking. I know that you also um, participate in the sticker shock campaign or have yes, in, the, we did. in the past. Yeah. The problem that I think that we face as a board is that we have in our policies, and I think you know this probably already, that we, we do have a minimum three-day suspension for a first violation. It's three days. Yes, yeah. minimum. C consecutive? Yes. 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 And also... It's actually it's a three to five day, but we have the but it's a minimum of, of, of three. In, in with, concert, what it we've begins done on the the day, same day of the week as the violation. We have some leeway as to when that 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 served. So that would be a Thursday, Friday. Those are our three busiest days of the week. Right. And when we lose the weekend, that's that's our week basically. That that's happened to the other establishments. Same okay. Thing. For some they reason on a Thursday, it just seems to fall. fall. Yeah. Um, now the restaurants were closed for three days, or they just no, weren't they just allowed to serve, serve alcohol. alcohol. Couldn't serve alcohol. Well, I mean, that's our only. <laughs> right, we understand. I have so what happens occasion. from here is, if that is indeed what uh, a member of this board moves and approves, is uh, that Mr. Heim, our town council, will write up these uh, uh, findings, and you'll be informed. And in that finding, it will say you need to uh, be closed for three days: Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you have until and we'll give a particular date. So we can that, choose the week that it happens? Yes, up to a point in time. Okay. Is it about out a month, month and a half? So I think that the, this board has the discretion to set what, they date would, what that date would be. And if uh, the respondent wants to talk about that, I would encourage that to happen now. Because this board set a, 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 a date for the end of May for the last uh, <coughs> folks who were found in violation. If there's any reason that you want to extend that period of time, I think that's within the board's discretion, but um, that should be decided now. Yeah. Uh, but I would agree to extend it like till the end of June because yes. those other three were what, a month ago that right. they were before us, right? Or two meetings, I think. So, so anyhow, Mr. Curro. Mr. Gurley, I think that it might even be reasonable in this situation to consider a longer period of time. When you look at the penalties, they're not actually identical penalties. With, with the case of a restaurant, 
you, you're, you're shutting down the alcohol service, you're not shutting down the business. We're essentially shutting down the, the business for, for three days. No, and it, I think yeah, it would it's be, not even essentially, it's, that's all we sell, so. It would be reasonable, if, if it pleases the board, in the case of a, of a package store, to consider a lengthier period of time in which to, to, to uh, serve the, um, the penalty. Yeah, I mean, make the motions. So. Uh, I'll, I'll, I will move that we um, suspend <coughs> Um, the um, license for uh, monotony beer and wine for three consecutive days beginning on the day of the week of the, of the penalty um, said suspension to be served um, by the end of July. Is there a second? Three. Second. Second. Discussion. Okay, Mr. Dunn? Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I've been a patron of the store several times. I uh, enjoy their product and uh, what they do. And I also, I've been, and through that I can tell you some of the things that they do for the community and the, t and the schools that are nearby and uh, some of the fundraisers that they've helped sponsor and stuff like that. And uh, frankly, I am very sympathetic to uh, what I think is going to be a harder penalty than is, uh, than is appropriate. I do think a penalty is appropriate and I think their policy is what it is. But this is one of the, I guess, one of the things that I've, you remember in our past alterations of the policy, I have pushed for more flexibility rather than less. And uh, so given that we've got some flexibility here, we, even within the policy, I'm happy to, to push it. So I'm happy to support Mr. Kira's motion. Okay. Ms. Mahan. Um, just for consideration, um, mm -hmm. just where with previous um, violations, not just this year and other years, usually within four weeks we um, imposed uh, the penalty. Um, same by the end of July. I, I understand it's different than a restaurant, but the but bottom line is ser serving underage, um, under 21 year old um, uh, persons who should not be served alcohol. And also looking at, you know, in July, you have July 4th, things like the thing is, I, I'm, I'm thinking as a court reporter setting a precedent, um, giving more than three months seems extremely. Um, seems a, a little bit extreme and as well as taking into account you also have the July 4th weekend you know if you're talking about <coughs> Friday Saturday if I I was wondering if you'd be amenable to, to be saying by June 30th versus July 31st well I think with our, our previous violations we'd given until the end of May all right so effectively they were in two, two months ago. yeah so effectively two months um, I think I, I'd, I'd like to stick with my motion for the reason is just because I think that the penalty is not is not like between a restaurant and, and a package store, so I'd like to exercise the flexibility. But that's okay. I, I understand. Okay. And, my thing and is, I understand your my position thing is on the it. message, especially you coming from school committee. No, I understand your position. No, I, and I'm position. a coach at the high school, so I have to really. I understand also your wear position. I mean, I know you were at the school side. You can kind of, you, you don't have to. Have you, no, I shouldn't say it that way, but I still have, I'm also a coach at the high school, so like, for that reason I will not be voting for it. I, w I would, would have voted by the end of June. I think that's more than enough time. And the whole point, this is a penalty. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Byrne. I'm gonna be in the minority. Um, thank you. Um, I, I have a question. If, when, it, when we're sitting here talking about the dates, um, it, regardless of if we put it out to June or July, do you, would you anticipate waiting until the end of the period to follow through with your suspension? Um, quite honestly, July would be a better month for us to do it just because things, people leave town and we're quieter then. We're actually busy in May and June. So that would just be, I mean, you guys can make the decision, that's fine, but no, that would I be understand. my two cents on it. Um, just the next couple of months, we're hoping for an uptick in business after the past couple of months, which have been awful. So, um, I mean, we can pick a date tonight I'd prefer it to be July, even if it was the weekend after the 4th of July, you know, someplace, if we could have that extra two weeks, I would appreciate that, just because I think leading up to July, those can be busy days for us, for July 4th. Thank you. Any other Thank discussion? You. Okay. Um, Doug, is this public? Do I yes. take input? Okay, would anybody in the audience like to speak on this issue? All right, on the motion by Mr. Curo, which is a three-day suspension start for a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and that suspension is to be served before, the end, before July 31st. Uh, you, you'll have to inform us as to okay. uh, right. what date you do sure. make that decision. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All right, the next one is the Sagar Restaurant Court for Punjabi Tatka. Same thing, could you explain to us what happened and what changes you've made, please? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Ajay, and uh, I'm the manager and one of the director too. So the guy who served the minors, he's in this line from last 15, but he <coughs> served the beers because he, he was very busy and he, he just skipped it. And I'm strong, this is our first mistake, and I strongly requested to apologize and just it's our first mistake. Can, I, can um, I just say, I yeah. say a little part, a little, I, I'm a little deaf in this ear, I apologize. I think I no, heard you one. say that he was new, it was no, busy, no, no. and he was skipping. No, uh, to, if the, you could guy, just, the guy yeah. who served the beers to minors, mm -hmm. he in this line from last uh, 15 years, he never did the mistake on that day. He's a little bit busy. And I'm, I'm not at the floor, I'm off. And uh, he served the beers to minors, but I strongly apologize to you. This is our first mistake. It will never happen again. That's it. And, and what changes have you made to ensure it won't happen again? No, no, because the guy, he says, he says to me that uh, when the customers orders, uh, the minors orders the beers, so the other guy went to the delivery, and the same times the customer came in, and he says that he's going to seat them, so because he's the only one in the floor on that day, and he seated and he skipped it to see the ID, and he served the beers, but that's all. So I strongly apologize, and I promise it will never happen again. Has he taken the tips program, or, or would you tell us that he will take that program? Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you want to? Sorry. Does he know what the tips program? Do you know what the tips program is? The tips program, I don't know, but I will check the website so they will. He will do it. I'm saying. Okay, we never did it before. Too. I don't want. To, I never did it before. Okay. So nobody in your establishment has done the tips program. And not yet. Okay. Because we. So I, I mean, I think we want to include that in whatever the board decides. Um, it, they can do it online. Um, so um, it, it's not required. It's just strongly, strongly recommended. Okay. And especially in this case for that employee. Uh, okay. Yeah, when he comes in, we'll explain the TIPS program to him. Right. Basically. Okay. If, if you'll come back to the selectman's office okay. here, they will, they'll, they'll help you understand okay. what it is and how to do it, okay? Okay. All right, Mr. Dunn. Um, I have a question, and I, so I'll say that um, since I have a question, I won't lead with my motion, but w I certainly think that we should make it required mm -hmm. as a part of the, co uh, the s completion of the suspension. Uh, could you, so one of the things that the previous person said right off the bat was the training that they're doing for all of their employees to keep it from happening again. Okay. So, and that was very important to me that she said that because it tells me, uh, I, I believe you that you don't want it to happen again, but I also need to understand that you're taking steps okay. to prevent it from happening again. Okay. And I think the tips training is a good start, but I'd, I'd like to, he have you done any other, do you plan any other, can you suggest any other steps that you'll take to do better training such that it doesn't happen again? Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so one of the things that I think we, sh uh, for, for the purposes of discussion, I'm going to make a, mo make a motion. Yes, sir. I propose that we suspend um, the liquor license for three days, uh, a period to end in June. I recognize that we said July for the last one, but I think it's a restaurant versus the, three days to end in June um, at their pick that before the, before the end of the suspension, which is to say you know, if they pick a weekend in June, they must both complete tips training for all employees who serve alcohol, and they must provide a training program which they can model off one of the ones that has been submitted with the board and agree to follow that training problem going, program going forward. So that's, that's my motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second. And is inherent on that, as we've done in the past, that the first night of the suspension is it's the same as the night of the offense? Yes. And, and then I just have one comment. 
Um, just in terms of, we were talking about the TIPS program that you can contact the Board of Selectmen's office, either come down or a call. Okay. But the other thing is in terms of um, your policy or protocol with your employees, when we've had other people before us, what they've done is they've either updated or created a document anywhere from one to four or five pages that when any new employee comes in, it says, you know, this is the alcohol policy, this is what we do, this is, you know, what you need to do, and, and the employee reads through it, whether it's four, eight, 12 different um, instructions, and then they sign it, acknowledging that, yes, I recognize this is what we need to go through. If somebody looks like, I'm just saying off the top of my head, if somebody looks like they're under 31, I need to card them. You know, if um, somebody, um, I, has ordered more than two drinks and has been carded, needs to order a meal, things like that. So if, if you want to, in terms of what I would like to see that I've seen from other people when they failed on this violation is that they actually have something in writing, that they sit down with their employees and say, this is how we want to make sure this doesn't happen again. Okay. You read this, mm -hmm. you sign it, you know, Diane Mahan, whatever date, and then the manager signs that they did that. So that if in the future, um, they didn't follow that, I think it, that would give you more of a leeway in terms of whatever you need to do in the future for your business and with that employee if they've read the rules and they still don't follow them. So you don't have to do that second part. I agree with Mr. Dunn in terms of the tips, which is in his mo motion that you can get information on that. I just put that as a suggestion to you. Okay. Thanks. Okay, anybody else? Anybody from the public wishing to speak on this? All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Dunn, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, item number 11 for approval an ice cream fundraiser for the Dana Farber Cancer Institute. Hi. Hi, I'm here just to support my student, Shivam Rastogi. My name is Elizabeth Scott. I'm a teacher at the high school. Shivam has been my student for two years. He's an impressive young man, and he's been leading a group of about 30 students on this philanthropy project. Hi. <clears throat> Good evening. Hi. I'm here today to ask permission to use Whittemore Park as the premise for a fundraiser. Over the past month, uh, the members of the biology club and I have been approaching local businesses to gather donations of ice cream and ice cream toppings so that on May 17th, we may distribute them to the public for, uh, from 12 to 4 o'clock for $5. And then the proceeds that we make, we'd like to donate that to the Jimmy Fund for uh, cancer research. And uh, in terms of the ice cream, recently we've gone to the Board of Health and I have submitted a form and we're pending, that's pending, from Ms. Natasha Warden. Thank you. Move good, okay, move approval, good for you. Although our letter says May 16th, I Sorry, think you May just 16th, said the 17th. I misspoke. Okay, so it is May 16th, yes. all right. And so move approval, discussion, or second for a second? Second. Second, discussion, Ms. Mahan. I know you said the Whittemore Park, but just in case people that are wa watching at home, it's gonna be in front of the Cyrus Dallin Museum. Yes, and we'll also provide uh, 611. Massachusetts Ave. And uh, in terms of your uh, group or club that you have, approximately how many of you and your peers will be down there that day <coughs> manning that event? We will definitely take shifts, but there are a total of 30 volunteers. And I just wanted to highlight that because that's really impressive that you've Thank you. gotten 30 of your peers to volunteer, 29 and yourself of your peers to volunteer for something like this. And I, I really commend you for doing this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Excellent work. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good luck with it. So, is it like all the ice cream you can eat? I'm just checking in yes. case. <laughs> 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 Thanks. Thank good luck. Thank you. Take care. Item number twelve for discussion. Article thirty-three, uh, the Arlington Human Rights Commission. Mr. Chapter Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next two items, I just wanted to take an opportunity uh, to just inform the board of. Uh, positions, uh, uh, well, one, the positions I would take, and two, just uh, some discussions that are taking place about warrant articles that uh, will be deliberated <coughs> over the course of the next several weeks at town meeting. First, as the board knows, there's two warrant articles this year, Articles 9 and 33, that deal with the Arlington Human Rights Commission. 
9 contemplates potential changes to the uh, bylaw that enabled the Human Rights Commission. 33 contemplates a potential financial appropriation for the position of executive director uh, for the Human Rights Commission. Just very simply put, I provided the board with a little bit of background about uh, the portion of the bylaw that speaks to uh, the executive director's position, as well as the uh, vote um, as approved by the Finance Committee in regards to Article 33. Uh, simply put, uh, I've had a conversation with one individual member of the Human Rights Commission. I plan to attend uh, the next or following uh, subsequent meeting of the Human Rights Commission uh, to discuss what the current staffing needs are, what the history has been, uh, and see what the, the right solution is going forward uh, so that by next year's town meeting, if necessary, we can make a recommendation for a funding request and or potential changes to the bylaw. Uh, in that was really it. Wanted to inform the board uh, of what my plan is going forward. Okay, thank you. Questions from the board? Okay. For discussion, the Mugar property, Mr. Chapter Lane? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chair, I'd like to speak to this warrant article. Sorry. My warrant article? We're not discussing. Show me, Mr. Harrington. All right. Warrant How does the board, does, do you want to listen to him? It's not a hearing on your warrant article, sir. How does the board want? No, no. Okay. Mugar property. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the board may recall, at I believe two meetings ago, uh, several residents came before the board during Citizens Open Forum to discuss uh, the Mugar proposal that the town has been made aware of. And one of the requests they made was that the town, through the Board of Selectmen, consider uh, a town meeting resolution be put forward uh, to basically not necessarily state opposition, but a commitment, uh, a longstanding commitment to preserving the Mugar parcel. Uh, that's also stated in the master plan. Uh, discussions between myself, town council, director of planning and community development, and the special municipal council, which the town has retained uh, for dealing with this issue. Uh, we, we talked through the pros and cons uh, of considering a resolution, and really the main issue is making sure that some vote be taken, if a vote's to be taken, before an application is actually filed by the developer. Uh, so the timeline for calling a special town meeting was problematic in that regard. Uh, so amongst the group, uh, we came to the conclusion that an elegant solution to this problem would be uh, considering an amendment from the floor to the master plan resolution, which would add uh, a number of whereases, which clearly state the town's longstanding commitment to preserving uh, Mugar as open space, uh, which has been voted by town meeting in the past and is also included in the master plan, so it's not out of place being included with that, uh, within that resolution. There is some draft language, uh, which I don't have ready for you uh, tonight, uh, but should be uh, able to have the board uh, deliberate on before it's actually brought up at town meeting. And again, I just wanted to inform the board of this conversation as it unfolds. Questions from the board, Mr. Carroll? Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Manager, I was just wondering, if uh, this course is followed, will the redevelopment board be considering it first, a as happened with the um, the, the article when it went through its hearing process? So we haven't discussed that, but I think that would make sense to do so. Okay. Yes, Ms. I, I, again, I, I'm sorry. I, and not, not that it would be absolutely required, but I'm sure appropriate. I understand. So I'm sure yeah. people would want to know the Airbnb I understand. in favor. Yep. Oh. Yes, ma'am. I now have two questions. Just sort of follow up on that. Just the master plan, I believe, is Article 46, which is the last of um, the articles that we have. Are you saying that um, you anticipate the redevelopment board um, asking to take it out of order and have it sooner in the meeting? And if so, one of the requests I would have is that at least um, whoever is proposing the amendments, that that information be on the seats. I mean, ideally, at least two meetings before. Are you saying? I, I was not proposing that the article be taken out of order. OK, so it will be. You know, I mean, barring that we may say when we're at Article 42, we want to take 46, but we're not saying, That's okay. And then um, my uh, second <coughs> question or comment, which I sort of already touched on, is um, ideally with all the precinct meetings that we had across the town, I only attended one series of them where I was involved with, but there were three others. Um, would we anticipate that perhaps at least a week before, you know, two town meetings before we reach Article 46 that um, the amendment might be available to town meeting members so that they, you know, since it's such an important issue. And then the second um, question would be, um, is it still perhaps the intention, because I've spoken with several people, including the town manager, that um, in concert with showing that this is a long 
term stated goal that perhaps in that amendment it also be stated that since uh, 2001 it has been directly stated in the open space master plan that the selectmen in town meeting um, has approved and authorized that uh, the MUGAR, uh, obtaining the MUGAR wetlands and, and maintaining them as wetlands is a goal. So to answer the two questions, one, I would presume at the very least we wouldn't have the language available 48 hours prior to being contemplated by town meeting earlier if possible. And to the second point, the contemplated language that's been uh, still in draft format does list point by point the steps the town has taken over the past uh, 15 to 20 years uh, in terms of voting for protection of the Mugar property. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else on the board? Okay. Um, <coughs> Thank you, and then item number 14, the amended comptroller's position description. This is simply in follow-up to <clears throat> the discussion we had at the last board's meeting. Uh, at that meeting, uh, the board asked, uh, and I said uh, I would do so in terms of following up with the actual revised job description after the board's discussion, so this is for the board to receive and make any further comment if appropriate. Mr. Burns. Um, I'll move her seat. And, um, I'd just like to thank the town manager and the HR department and uh, everyone else involved with this, including my colleagues, in um, coming up with what I think is a really good job description that clearly explains um, the role of the comptroller and um, will help in selecting a, a really great candidate to um, follow a great comptroller that we have now. So thank you very much, everyone. Okay. Second. Second. Uh, discussion? Do you want to say it? Or do you want to just you want to just abstain, or you want to say why? Or um, I'm I'm just gonna previous to um, previous meeting we had the board of selectmen. Um, I actually actually left the room in terms of when this conversation came up, and um, with the approval of, of the chairman and my colleagues, I would like to abstain so if we could call for abstentions on this vote. Okay. And I am not participating in any discussions on the job duties or responsibilities contained right. therein. Right. Uh, currently, the comptroller is over. Right, the, the uh, phones, so. Okay, uh, so on the motion by Mr. Byrne and seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed and all those who abstain. Aye. All right, uh, correspondence received. Move receipt. Move receipt. Discussion or actions on any of the items? Mr. Kiro. Um, yes, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the. Um, I did note uh, Mr. Uh, Fuller's um, uh, note to us regarding the uh, the Sims fund reporting, and I, I do notice he's he's here. I don't know if you'd entertain asking him to uh, sure to address what? his correspondence. It's the first item. It's um, Sims fund reporting. Okay. Mr. Grill, I think the town manager has his hand raised. Oh, oh. Yeah, well, and, and if I may, not to speak for Mr. Fuller, but Deputy Town Manager uh, Andrew Flanagan has been corresponding with uh, Mr. Fuller over the course of the past couple of weeks, and. We do plan to have a document to go on the chairs before the end of town meeting in terms of a Sims Fund report, but obviously let Mr. Fuller add yep. to that. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Mrs. Kropelka did put me in touch with Andrew Flanagan, and we also copied the assistant treasurer, Michael Morse. So it's all good. It's all in the works. I'm voting for her for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Smart move. <laughs> it's it's unanimous. Second. Can I second that? <laughs> She'd win pretty easily. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Fuller. Okay, so otherwise, uh, on, uh, on receipt for all correspondence received, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay. Uh, and so now, under new business, Mrs. Kripelka, Mr. Hein. Nothing, sir. Mr. Chapterley. Nothing. Wow, Mr. Byrne. I don't think I have anything either tonight, Mr. Greeley. Ms. Mahan. Uh, just for, very briefly, and I'll speak at future meetings about this, um, I do have family members over in Nepal. Um, I ask, as we already have prayers for them, right now they're safe. Um, but um, I do anticipate in the future, since I do have such a close tie with um, people over in Kathmandu and Nepal and Arlington, such a generous community that, um, and I'm going to be speaking with the town manager and the school superintendent and my colleagues about um, what we can do in terms of um, aiding everybody over there in Nepal, and that's all I have for new business. Okay. John's not over there, is he? Your husband? No, my daughter-in-law, yeah. her dad, brothers, sisters, cousins, my grandson's cousins. God bless him. Uh, Mr. Kiro? Um, no new business. Mr. Dunn? Uh, Minuteman. Uh, we have the Minuteman. Thursday I'm going well, to call it the town manager's working group uh, met again uh, last week. 
it, I think we can safely say that the regional agreement that we all supported is not going to go forward in its current form. And unfortunately, it looks for, like the Minuteman School Committee is not pushing for that to happen at this time. They tabled the most recent amendments indefinitely, which uh, this board and the Finance Committee in town meeting have all voted that uh, we need that regional agreement before we'll go forward with the building project. And uh, it, I think that the Minuteman Leadership School Committee and hired you know, professional leadership will need reminding of that in the, re uh, in the relatively near future. And I will also re remind the board that they are coming on Thursday to talk about the building project that they want to do. I unfortunately will not be able to attend that meeting, um, which I apologize and I regret, but at the same time, we need people there to say, to tell them that no regional agreement, no school. Good. Oh. That's it? That wasn't that Mr. Creeley. Huh? Wasn't that enough? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, everybody was uh, so good tonight. Well, most everybody was so good tonight. Um, I just have one. Um, Maria and I uh, uh, have met with Corey, and uh, there is just some discussions on one day, um, mm. well, we're going to change from one day to special event alcohol licenses. Mm -hmm. But we'll come back to you uh, with those changes in the near future. Other than that, move to adjourn. Uh, I'd actually like to make a motion to uh, t recess and reconvene in conjunction with the commencement of town meeting and that the uh, final adjournment of this um, part of the Board of Selectmen's meeting is concurrent <coughs> with the actual adjournment with the regular town meeting. And if I may interrupt for one note, which is uh, the bottom of our, uh, the, uh, exactly in line, the bottom of our agenda says the next meeting is May 11th. That's the next regular meeting, but we should also talk about how we're meeting concurrently on Wednesday and the following. We already had closed the deadline. We did. Okay, good. It's, uh, yeah, it's just that it says the, on the bottom of the minutes, uh, sorry, the bottom of the agenda, right. we listed the next regular as opposed to the next board. It, it's, it's just get better to get it correct now and then we'll fix and, it. And this is just inherent in following with open meeting law that if while we're down on the floor of town meeting, something arises that um, the body town meeting asks for a vote of the board of selectmen, we are still in open session. The town moderator will announce that the board of selectmen will be meeting in a particular corridor minutes will be taken and the public is welcome to attend. So we are in open session for those purposes only um, and we'll convene um, concurrent with the um, adjournment of the last night of final town meeting. But Wednesday night, we're here we just at the start of yes. town meeting unless yes. we otherwise, okay. Right. All right, we're all good on that? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Now we are adjourned. How many minutes do you have to you? <laughs> 25. Oh, at least you have a little bit. Okay.